Hello, good morning and welcome to New Forest Morphs. We'd like to thank all our new subscribers that have joined the channel in the last 24 hours or so. Uh, very much appreciated and we'd like to thank Bob um, at the Green Room for joining us. On the, we joined him on the live chat last night and uh, he gave us a shout out and one or two of his subscribers have jumped onto our channel. So thank you Bob for giving us a little shout out there. We do appreciate it. Today I've got Leonardo who's the Christmas present gift that we're going to be giving today. The, results of the competition we're going to run today but before we do that Jared I just wanted to talk about the process of doing health checks both when we're shipping animals out and also when we're bringing animals in what would you say Jared is a good thing to do before we um, ship out a snake you just want to make sure the overall health of the snakes good you want to make sure they're a good weight yes. that they look healthy that they're eating meals um, you want to make sure that they're completely clean of mites no RI, yeah. nothing that could potentially jeopardise someone's collection. Absolutely. Um, we're pretty good in our collection, we haven't got any problems, so we'll, we'll do a check just to make sure that he's clean before we send him out. But Yeah, now I think um, one or two breeders and one or two keepers um, may or may not know how to check the internal side of a snake in terms of, I mean I know when I was new to the hobby um, I was a little bit reluctant to actually open up the mouth of the snake because it's quite understandable because you know how they're full of muscle, they don't like their heads being opened up. But Jared's learned a new technique recently, Jared, that you're finding quite helpful. We used to use the credit card approach, didn't we? Mm. Do you remember? Where well, you can use like a credit card. A clean, that works, that a, works fine. A clean credit card to just pry, gently pry open the mouth and check to make sure that internally... What you, so you might do an external examination of a snake and I think this is the big mistake that a lot of people make, is they look at the external side, but they don't look in detail at the internal inside's mouth. And that's where a lot of problems can be hidden. And you don't realize you're taking a snake into your collection that might have a problem. So what we're gonna do, Jared, is we're gonna maybe do a little demonstration today of how you use your new technique to open up Leonardo's mouth. And we'll just show you how clean he is, that he's absolutely spotless. We've, done, we've already done health checks. We wouldn't be making this a snake available if we didn't think it was perfect. So, but we're just going to show you a technique of how we check our end. And of course, when it gets to the other side, Jared, there's two or three things that can be done to help protect the collections. What are the, what's the responsibility of the seller and what's the responsibility of the buyer when it comes to protecting collections and shipping healthy animals? What, what are the two main responsibilities that we have? Well, the seller should never ship something that they know is sick or has been around sick animals. Yes. And the buyer should always quarantine the snake because you never know, it could pick something up in transit. Yes. It could get stressed out and get a problem on the way. Um, a good technique for sellers is to take pictures of the snake before and videos to show that it's healthy. Yes. So if anything does happen, you, you can say it wasn't that way with us, but um, it's always the buyer's responsibility to quarantine for two to three months before they put it in with their collection. Absolutely. So that's, the, that's some good advice. And there was a third responsibility that we've got, which is actually the shipping company has a third responsibility as well, yeah. which falls normally either on the, the person that's organizing the shipping should make sure that the shipper has high standards of shipping as well. So if you do a 24 hour shipping, which some breeders do both in the UK and in Europe, um, I think it's quite hard to get a snake over into Europe in 24 hours, but I think you can do it within 48 if you use the right companies. And the reason why it's important to ship a snake within a 24 hour to 48 hour window, Jared, what's the benefit of shipping quite early? Well, it's quite obvious, it reduces stress and make sure that the snake doesn't overheat or under or cool. Yeah. So we use a company called, well, they used to be called Cold Blooded Movements. They're Ridgeway Careers now. They're now called Ridgeway Careers. Now, Ridgeway Careers, all their vehicles come with heat pads and they actually... They've got a cabinet in there that heats up. Yeah, so the snakes aren't going to chill. You know, you can actually give them a snake and they'll put them on the right temps and they'll do their very level best to get the snake shipped to you as soon as they can. And we found their service to be really fantastic, haven't we, Jared? Yeah. I mean, they're very reliable. So we will probably use them in the future going forward, Jared. But obviously the buyer also has the right to organise shipping as well. And they may have their own preferred courier or shipper. So I think it's one of those where you come to an agreement as, as, uh, as, as two breeders coming together that you decide the best way of shipping, the safest way, and the most cost-effective way as well. 
Okay, so let's um, do a little demonstration, Jared, on how to open up the mouth of the snake. I'm going to switch cameras with you if you're happy to hold Leonardo and show yeah. our viewers how it's done. While he's doing that, I'll just give you a quick close up of the boy. You can see he's absolutely clean. We've weighed him, he's 1927 grams. So he's not exactly small, Jared, is he? No. Um, so he's perfectly healthy. First of all, you check all his body, make sure that he's clean. We don't have any mites in our collection, so we know that he's, he's fine, but we've checked him over just in case. Yeah. Mm. Um, and you check his belly. Look at his eyes he's... as well. You can tell a lot from a snake's eyes. Yeah. Like he has really healthy looking, bright eyes. Yeah. Now, how do you know that his eyes are healthy, Jad? What are you looking for? What are the... Well, you want them to look full. So sometimes you can get like a dehydrated animal and their eyes are a little bit sunken in. Let's see if I can zoom in on the eyes now. Just, it's not easy with these cameras. If you tap the screen, <laughs> they focus on. I'll, ta I'll tap the screen and see if I can get a focus on the eyes of the animal. But okay, yeah. So you're looking for if their eyes are unhealthy, they're normally, if, as long as they're not in shed, they're normally clouded, and they're normally slightly dimpled. Instead of it yeah. being a nice, is it concave shape where you've got humidity in the eye, you find that the eye is nice and healthy and full. But if they start to go in and there's very little water in the eye. It's normally a sign that they actually are uh, lacking humidity and they're lacking mm -hmm. um, hydration in their bodies. So another thing, usually you can tell straight from the start, you look at their mouth, make sure there's no bubbling, make sure they haven't got any scale rot or whatever issues there could be out there. Yeah. So you want to make sure that they're looking healthy, they've got tongue flickering, they're responsive. Yeah. Um, but the way you check inside is like this. Talk us through how you're holding the snake first. So yeah. he's wrapped around my arm. You can yeah. do it while he's on the table, you can hold him against your body either way. Yeah. So with this you want to be um, firm with the snake but also gentle because yeah. you don't want to hurt the snake. So if they try too hard to pull away, just let go and wait until they're in a good position. Yeah. Right, so the way that we do it is thumb and middle finger that side and then this on the top. Mm -hmm. Hold him against your body, get a uh, cotton bud and just gently go in there behind the teeth and open up okay. and as you can see there's nothing in there mm -hmm. no saliva nothing at all so he's clean as a whistle he's clean as a whistle yeah which is good can snakes have some saliva i mean they shouldn't have excess saliva but we, we have saliva in our system jared but That's humans. yeah if um a snake it's has a, bit a little different. bit of saliva does that mean that there's a potential ri issue developing or do you think it's natural for snakes to have a little bit of saliva um, I think, well, I've, I've spoken to vets about it, and they've said that a little bit of saliva could be the potential of an RI. Yeah. A little bit worrying. Yeah. Um, and to up the temperatures and make sure that it goes away, because they shouldn't really have any saliva at all. Yes. Because they're very different to humans and how they eat their food. And Now, we regularly digest. check all our animals, both externally and internally, particularly when it comes to pairing, because obviously if there's a hidden danger, you're going to transmit it through your collection on the pairing stage. Yeah. So we go the extra mile, don't we, Chad? We make sure that we check everything very carefully each time. We try to wash our hands each time we touch. Mm -hmm. We try to make sure that the hygiene is first class. And I think if we ever discover any problem, Jared, let's say we discover a snake that has got some um, saliva building. Take them straight out of your collection, put them into a quarantine rack, yeah. and then just don't breed any more at all in your collection. Yeah. Make sure your collection's completely clean for a couple months before you carry on anymore yeah and the quarantine period is normally two to three months so two when to three months something should appear so the winner time. of the snake should actually put this into quarantine for two to three months because yeah. even though we've done our checks and we're happy our end things could actually develop in transit things yeah. could i mean if it ends up getting cold it not could get stressed out it can develop an ri it could develop yeah. it could catch mites in the from other snakes like yeah anything can happen so yeah so it's very wise to, to put it into it. quarantine very wise to do so to protect your main collection and the treatments for RI, Jared, there's lots of different treatments. I've seen things done with um, internal antibiotics, and I've also seen things done with an uh, injection, where you're injecting antibiotics. Now, the key when you're treating an RI snake is to pick it up early, isn't it? If you allow it to develop and it gets worse and worse and worse, you're going to be always fighting a, a very difficult battle. So if you have any suspect that your animal is wheezing, breathing wrongly, if it's showing it. bubbling at the mouth or there's extra saliva, the first thing you should do is call the vet, explain to them what you're seeing, and then ask them for their recommended treatment, yeah. and then quarantine it. And then 
give it treatment as quickly as you can. The earlier you get it, get it in the system, Jad, the better, isn't it? Because you can nip things in the bud. Sometimes a vet will tell us to, um, you know, sometimes he'll just tell us to uh, basically up the temps and you can actually change your husbandry because obviously RI is normally a husbandry issue and there's two types of R, isn't there? There's the bacterial side which and is very viral. treatable and then you've got the viral side so there's two elements to an RI that you've got to and the vet will then do a swab test and tell you which one you've got and if it's a bacterial one they're, they're very much treatable if it's a viral one it's unfortunately it can lead to death mm. okay so on a more positive note yeah <laughs> it's just it's good to always know about your animals to know what they could have and how to prevent it yeah and how to treat it if it does come up yeah because chances are you buy a snake from someone they sold it and it's got an ri you find it in your quarantine and you've got to do something about it yeah so. okay so let's run the competition jared should we do that now or sure. do i do it at the end of the video i don't mind let's do it now and uh, let's run the uh competition now and then we'll carry on with the rest of the video okay so we've got our random comment picker, if my mouse will work. So we know the drill, copy and paste, the, uh, is it called an IRL, whatever that's called. Yeah. Put it into the random generator, paste. So we filter duplicate users, so there's only one comment per person. Get YouTube comments, we've got a total of nine. <laughs> Now, should we have a look at those nine? Because some of them might not be wanting to enter the competition, and some of them may. Well, when we, when we do it, if they don't want to be in it, we can okay. rerun it. All right, then. Otherwise, it takes a while. Okay, well, good luck, everybody. So, we'll start. 3CB. Congratulations. I'm not going to read all of that right now. I, I would like to read some of it, Jack, because okay. I was really touched by this. Okay. <laughs> this is a beautiful message. In fact, let me just say to everybody that's entered the competition, one of the most important things for us, particularly when we're giving a snake uh, away, and particularly during the Christmas period, is we want to make sure it's going to a really good home where the heart of the person that's receiving it is well received. And we use the power of, um, well, I have, I have a very deep spirituality in my life, and I can discern and feel for the spirituality and strength of others around me. And even though I haven't met this particular person, 3CB, the force is strong with him. Oh <laughs> and if you just have a little look at the, um, he loves, look at his dog for the start, but let's look at his logo, because I think he's got a beautiful looking dog. What kind of dog is that, Joe? Is that a boxer? Is it a or pit bull? I mean, is it's it a pit, a pit bull? bull? Staffy? Is it a pit? It's not a staffy. It's not a staffy, is it a pit bull? I think it's a pit bull. God, it's an impressive looking dog. So we want to send our congratulations to 3CPB. And let's have a look at what he said. He said, hey, I recently stumbled across your channel and I've got to say, it's absolutely amazing seeing reptile breeders starting channels and spreading awareness and educating others about these lovely yet such misunderstood animals. I've developed an un, uh, unhealthy, let's say, passion for reptiles, snakes in particular. And before getting into breeding them, I've spent almost every single day for the past year watching as many videos and reading as many information uh, informational pages etc about bull pythons in particular as I want to make sure I give them the best possible lives I possibly can as I'm a huge animal lover in general now that's a good sign to me that he's well read done the preparation he's not just suddenly thinking you know this is a free snake I'm gonna grab it and then sell it on yeah. he really wants this snake Jared and he's done the research let's just finish the message though because it is a beautiful message um, uh, where are we, Chad? I'm not swearing. As a young as a young breeder, it's not easy starting a breeding project, and I don't have the massive funds saved up like others. But I made sure I have more than enough to take care of each and every one of his snakes, and that's really that's good. important. That was one of your questions to me when we were, before we ran the competition: Is everyone got the financial resources to look after this snake? Because the last yeah. thing you want to do is give a snake to someone and they neglect it. Yeah. And they give it a problem because Leonardo is still dear to us, but we want to help someone else in their collection as yeah. well. And it's not part of our breeding plans, and so we felt that we'd like to give it as a Christmas gift. Let's finish the message, Jared. So it says, um, let's have a little look. Uh, so having Leonardo in my collection would really, really help me out with future projects and working pastel Mojave into Pied and creating heads. If I win, he would be the second snake alongside Emma, my female Pied girl, who I have reserved. So he would be part of a 
uh, of a OG squad. Haha. -ha. Is that OG? Yeah, OG squad. Original. Oh, original squad. Okay. Jad knows more about texting than I do. So yeah, he would help out a lot and a new breeder. And of course, he will receive all the care and love he needs. Anyways, even if I don't win, no big deal. I hope whoever does win takes great care of him and hopefully he makes a great addition to someone else's collection. Well, that's really touching, isn't it? Yeah. Good luck to everyone interested in this beautiful Leonardo. And once again, thank you, New Forest Morse, for putting out real, honest, and very, very useful videos regarding these misunderstood beauties. I can sense that 1,000 sub, sub goal being reached before the end of the year. Cool, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> We'd love that. But do you see, I've got a really good feeling about this, Jared. And so we want to send our love and congratulations to 3CB. 3CB. So well done. And uh, if you could contact Jared on Instagram and give us your uh, address details, obviously in uh, that will be kept in confidence. Yeah. And then we'll organise the shipping. And that's wonderful. So now let's, um, how are we doing for time on the video, Jared? You've done 16 minutes. Oh, excellent. So we've got time for some ultrasounding. I think Rob at Royal Balls likes us to do the odd bit of ultrasounding. He likes the science behind everything. So what I thought we'd do today is actually ultrasound two of the girls that are very close to being ready to go, which is Caramac. She is our ultramel girl. So are you okay with that, Jack? We can, we can do that. Do you want to do this one? Sure. So I'll just set that up. And if you want to just zoom in on her and just, I'll get the ultrasound out ready to go. And even if I set up Jared, I'm quite happy for you to just show off one or two animals or if you've got any favourite animals you want to show off when I set up, feel free to we'll do be that. all day. <laughs> even just a couple. It'll take me a couple of minutes to get this set up. I forgot to set it up, so my apologies to our viewers. This is where editing would come in handy. <laughs> Skip it all out, but here you go. This is my probably all-time favourite snake that we own and her name's Shadow. She's a super cinnamon, 100% het pied, and has a beautiful ringer. I think she's probably my all-time favourite. Got loads of other favourites as well. Calypso, she's a pastel clown, 100% het pied. And we've got big plans for her. Our Starburst is lovely as well. This is a Mojave Ultramel. Female, and that's the difference between a Mojave Ultramel and a normal Ultramel. It's beautiful, aren't they? They're all from the same clutch. We've got some tremendous birds coming through on our breeding projects for next year. And they're all doing really well. As we said yesterday, they're smashing food, they're building through, they've gone straight through any... There's no wall for them, they're just going straight through. Which, you know, I think there's an interesting argument. We still don't know why people believe their animals hit a wall. And we have hit it a couple of times, haven't we, Jared? But not... When, when you think about that we've got potentially 80, up to 80 females, of which 40 of them are mature, and we only have one or two of those that have gone through the wall, mm -hmm. that's a really small percentage. One out of, what is that, one out of, say, two out of 40. If it was four out of 40, it'd be 10%. Two out of 40, that's 5% of our girls hit the wall. Yeah. Now, it makes me wonder whether the wall is something that we're putting into our heads. You know, Rob was talking about males going off food, that we kind of buy into that principle. Um, but I wonder whether we're buying into another principle about the wall. Maybe, yeah. Are we creating the wall ourselves? Or is it actually part of their anatomy and part of their development? I'll be wel welcome any views on that. Let me know your thoughts, guys, on what your experiences are. But... Obviously, you know, I'm very keen to know what people think. Right, Josh, shall I take the video and yeah, then you, on, you do the that. ultrasound? Okay, let's just see how we go. So, Caramac. Now, when I was a kid, one of my favourite chocolates is when I used to go to school. I used to go into the, into the newsagent. I used to pick up a Caramac. I used to love them. Not very good for you, but they... And when she was... Um, when she hatched out and she showed me how to shed her colours, they look like a bar of Caramac, and that's why we gave them the name Caramac, yeah, wasn't it? I'm not sure. If they, like that. <laughs> I'm not sure if they get it in the US, but in the UK, a lot of the people in the UK will know about Caramac. It's lovely, tasty chocolate. There's your gallbladder. Come, on, let's have a look, Jack. That's fantastic clarity, Jack. That's really good. I'm gonna work away just below that, and we should get some follicles. There you go. 
pause that. Okay. <laughs> and just get the pause. Where's the freeze button? Freeze. Are we actually? Can you make it again. make it nice and clear, Jared? I'll freeze it again. There's two there. Keep going the other way. That's it. And just adjust it on an angle. See if you can find it again. <laughs> Camera's showing an interest in her follicles. <laughs> she wants to see what's going on inside her body. She's like a, a mother that wants to check her baby. I mean, we've not put any mail to her yet, but look, you can see she's having fun. She's probably picking up the heat signature. I'm wondering, is it? What's that? You got it? Mm hmm. Okay. So I'm going to guess about seven. Yeah, they're not massive. Seven if you're lucky, Jared. So yeah. All right, we'll clean up. We always clean up first. The welfare of the snake first, always. So well done, Caramac. Now I think if we don't stress out our animals doing this, Jared, because Rob was mentioning that we've got to be careful that we don't overdo, overdo things, and I yeah, think he's made sure. a good point. But I've seen some people like, pick up their snakes and really, you know, mess with them a lot. I think what we're doing here is she actually enjoyed a little bit of enrichment time there. I don't think she's stressed out. She's not showing any signs of stress. She wants to discover and, and she wants to, to go and search her mail probably. But um, that was really good, Jared. The fact that you found everything so quickly means that we can do this in a couple of minutes. So I don't think a couple of minutes of their time is going to stress them out too much. Mm -hmm. And of course, because she's a very low stress level anyway, if you do something like this, it's not going to elevate the stress levels. I think the problem would be is if you're over doing it too much, then I think it's an issue, Jared. Right. So let's have a look and see what the measurements are coming in at. Measure distance. Go from the top to the bottom. And then side to side. 7.1. 7.1, okay. So my guess of 7 was about spot on. Um, so Jared's going to now record that. We're using Reptile Scan. Let's just have a look and see how he's doing this. So he takes a picture of the animal he's scanned by taking the QR code. And then what's the next stage, Jared? Ultrasound. Ultrasound. So still small follicles. 7.1 millimetres. So we record and then it's in the system. This the is all snake. done through our Wi-Fi. So now you can see activities. Ultrasound, Caramac. And you can see the Reptile Info. You can then, if you wanted to ultrasound again, you can do that. And do you want to put a weight in as well? Because we should. What was our weight? 1442, I think it was. Mm -hmm. and there's a weight facility on there as well. You can record length, weight. You can then add a clutch when she lays an egg. There you go. Weight 1442 grams. Perfect. So I like to record weights as well as check follicle size to see how their weight is gaining and on their size. So we're now going to move on to the next one with an ultrasound. And we'll just do one more and then we'll do the shout out, Jared. Okay, so we've got five minutes. We've got five minutes, have we? So let's have a little look. Um, which one was it? I can't remember which one was that. Bubbles it was the other one. The truth is he actually has eight, but he always goes over time, so. So? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so, nothing. <laughs> actually, why don't we do her another time? Okay. Because, I'll tell you why, it's because I want to do a video about clowns and she's a clown. Right. <laughs> okay, so I'll kind of leave some material for another video. Um, that gives me more time to do a shout out because what I wanted to say was we've got um, one of my favourite channels is um, a lovely breeder that's been doing this for mo far more years than I have. And I think you and is it Lucas Landon, you knew about Lucas when you started to get into the hobby, didn't you, Jared? Yeah, about five years ago. So this this is Lucas Landon's Royals um, YouTube channel here. Now, you can see here he's got 4.73k subscribers, so he's very, very popular. He's only been doing it for a few years now. And I like his staff because he's very similar to ours. He builds his own racks, which Jared would like. And the way he builds his racks is very similar to how we used to build our racks. Now, we've bought a lot more racks since then from Herb Exotics, but when we first got into this, I mean, here's an example of one of Jared's little baby racks that we're going to use here. No, uh, no, this, this is my first ever thing. This is Jared's first ever it's rack. It's all a bit built. small. It's better for leopard geckos, I think. Yeah. Now, Hamlin is very much a man after your own heart, Jared, because Hamlin builds everything himself. Yeah. He's built his rack room, he's built his incubator. He's all built. 
we built all these. These are all built, so we've integrated what we had in the house with what we've got here. And that's why there's only, there, there is one colour mismatch. These two built. They're all built. So Jared has built quite a few things going on here. So when you go and check Lucas out, he, I think he's based in the US, isn't he? Um, he will show you how to build racks and he will give his demonstration, he'll go through everything. And I like the side of his channel that's educational. He's got some incredible jeans, Jared. Have you had a chance to see any of his jeans? I don't watch that much YouTube at the moment. It's mainly... Exantic mainly Heights, which is one of our projects, for example, has got my attention. He's hit some, Jared. Nice. And he's hit some hets as well. And they are beautiful specimens. Go check him out, guys. He's got the Black Pastel Cypress Pied, which are beautiful. We like Cypress. We like... We're going for the... Um, the Harvey Pies, aren't we? But Black Pastel Cypress, if you look at it, Jared, it is absolutely incredible. Clown projects. I mean, he's just got so much Clown going Ghost up. Pied. Clown Ghost Pied, triple recessive projects. So if you want to see someone that knows what he's doing, he does egg cutting, he does... He also shows the good and the bad. So if anything goes wrong, he's very open. I like that because it shows the reality of what goes on in the hobby. So we're going to send a lot of love to Lucas and the community that he's building. Please jump on his channel and give him a thumbs up and subscribe if you like the channel. We certainly do and I watch his videos on a regular basis. He puts out plenty of regular content and he's got a very clear accent, very clear, concise, to the point and he does edit his videos so you get... You, know, you don't really, get the waffle. You don't get the waffle that you get here but you get the shortened videos which is, is good. Now I used to edit and the reason why we don't edit for twofold is number one... I was Can't spending, <laughs> no, number one, I can edit because I've, I've edited in the past, but I found it was taking two or three hours out of my day and we're trying to do a daily blog and we've got another business to run. And I also thought it's actually nice to do a very naturalistic video where it's Jared and I talking as father and son and you get a feel for being here. And I didn't want it to be too glossy and I didn't want it to be too over, overcut. The uncut version is what you get here. I will probably do some really nice edits during the Christmas period, because we want to do some nice Christmas stuff for everybody. And whether we do the 12 days to Christmas build up that we did last year, Jared's <laughs> shaking his head so that. might have to get Emily or Adam in here to do that. <laughs> I might be going on a 12 day see, holiday. <laughs> you might see Father Christmas turning up. But let's have Unpaid much, leave. How much time have we got, Jared? <laughs> Three minutes. <laughs> Three minutes. <laughs> but for you, you've got one. <laughs> you might see me dressed up as Father Christmas and I might give you a dance and uh, you might see some bells on my feet. I'll tell you who might appreciate it, Bob from the green room might appreciate it because he's an entertainer and um, he'll have a good laugh at my cost because I'm not a professional entertainer I'm an amateur entertainer as you can tell <laughs> so uh, if you want to have a bit of a laugh and you want to see some uh, amateurish drama videos go over to his second channel <laughs> <laughs> yeah Jared was going to disown me off the print out some of that oh dear me <laughs> Anyway, let's, how much time have we got? Is it time for Lucas to You've got do just under two minutes. Two minutes. So we've got a little snart sample of what um, what's going on here. Which one should we show? I think we'll show the latest one. For the oh, ultimate it's going to give you ideas. Oh, look. Join international superstar Donny Osmond. Oh, Donny Osmond. Me, Julian Clary. <laughs> I think that's just a... What's up, Royals? I'm Kai. Hope you're doing well. And do you guys remember that third clutch where I was trying to make Exanthic Pies? Well, it's time for a clutch update, so stick around. You're watching Lucas Lane and Royals. This one's like it's Kai, Jared. Sorry. I mean, there's kids, right? Huh? Lucas and Landon, there's kids. Wait, I'm not sure. I'm going to give you an update on the hatchlings from the third Exanthic Pie Clutch. Surprisingly, we hit a 1.5, meaning one male and five females. We also got pies, we got pastels, we got Exanthics, but we didn't hit a Exanthic Pie. But don't fret, because what I have planned is back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back videos of Exanthics and pies. And yes, the next one will be the Exanthic Pie update. So make sure you stick around for that. Do what you need to do, thumbs up, subscribe, ring the notification bell so you can be informed of future uploads. Now let's jump right into the update. The dad is a pied head exantic and the... You gotta go and watch it if you wanna see these pied head exantics. Thank you for watching, thank you Jared for your love, and we'll catch you next time. Goodbye for now.